The Capitol riot of January 6, 2021 was one of the most shocking events in recent American history. A violent attack by supporters of President Trump, which threatened the certification of the 2020 election, endangered members of Congress, and damaged the Capitol building. The attack was the first time the U.S. Capitol was breached or occupied since the 1814 burning of Washington by the British during the War of 1812. Investigations into participants and planners of the storming of the Capitol are still underway at the time of this recording. The FBI is actively seeking information regarding a number of suspects. They are encouraging the public to come forward with tips that may help with their investigations, which can be provided to the Bureau by calling 1-800-CALL-FBI or at fbi.gov slash US Capitol. The identification of suspects may still be ongoing, but several individuals involved in the riot have already been charged with federal crimes. Now, while I would never encourage anyone to take pleasure in the misfortune of others, it is important to identify the key contributors to the violence on Capitol Hill. So, let's talk about it. Who's in big, big trouble? Perhaps the most easily identifiable suspect involved in the riots was Jacob Anthony Chansley, a prominent member of the QAnon conspiracy theory community, who is also known online as Jake Angeli or as Q Shaman. Ironically, a number of conservative commentators have pointed to Angeli as evidence that Antifa was responsible for the riots. Attorney Lynn Wood, for example, in a since-deleted tweet, claimed a picture of Angeli to be indisputable photographic evidence that Antifa violently broke into Congress. Pastor Mark Burns picked up on the same argument, claiming via tweet, this is not a Trump supporter. This is a staged Antifa attack. In fact, Angeli himself corrected these claims, tweeting at Lynn Wood, Mr. Wood, I am not Antifa or BLM. I'm a QAnon and digital soldier. My name is Jake, and I marched with the police and fought against BLM and Antifa in Phoenix. According to a Department of Justice press release, Mr. Angeli was taken into custody on January 9th, 2021, charged with knowingly entering or remaining in any restricted building or grounds without lawful authority, and with violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. In the same press release, the department announced that they had arrested Adam Johnson of Florida, who was allegedly photographed inside the Capitol carrying the Speaker of the House's lectern. Johnson was charged with one count of entering or remaining in a restricted building without lawful authority, one count of theft of government property, and one count of violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Another not-so-hard-to-identify suspect was Derek Evans, arrested on Friday on charges of entering a restricted building and violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Evans is a recently elected member of the West Virginia House of Delegates and allegedly live-streamed his entry into the Capitol. As he crossed the threshold of the doorway, he shouted, We're in! We're in! Derek Evans is in the Capitol! A well-known leader of the Proud Boys, Nick Ox, had actually tweeted a picture of himself smoking inside of the Capitol building during the riot with the caption, Hello from the Capitol, LOL. A press release from the Department of Justice released on Friday the 8th indicated that he had been arrested in Honolulu on charges of unlawful entry into restricted buildings or grounds. Despite being arrested in Hawaii, he will be facing charges in the District of Columbia. Richard Barnett has become recognizable for this photo of him making himself comfortable in the office of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. He was also photographed with an envelope, apparently taken from her desk, and he left her a note of his own. Barnett was arrested in Arkansas, but will be extradited to Washington, D.C. He faces numerous charges, including entering a restricted building, violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds, and theft of public property. Also specifically connected to Nancy Pelosi is Cleveland Grover Meredith Jr., who allegedly traveled to Washington, D.C. with hundreds of rounds of ammunition and an assault rifle. According to authorities, he sent texts to friends claiming he intended to harm the Speaker of the House. In one text, he said, I'm going to run that C-word Pelosi over while she chews on her gums. In another text, he claimed he was thinking of putting a bullet in Pelosi's noggin on live TV. 
He's been charged with making interstate threats to Speaker Pelosi. Lonnie Kaufman was charged with possession of an unregistered firearm and carrying a pistol without a license. He's been accused of having two firearms and 11 Molotov cocktails. Then there's Mark Leffingwell, who aside for charges relating to unlawful entry and disorderly conduct, faces charges relating an alleged assault on a federal officer. And there's Christopher Alberts, charged with carrying a firearm and ammunition onto Capitol building grounds. Larry Rendell Brock was charged on Sunday, January 10th with illegal entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. He was identified as one of the people who allegedly entered the Capitol wearing a helmet and a tactical vest and carrying zip cuffs. Eric Gavlik Munchel was charged around the same time on identical charges. This is allegedly him also wearing a tactical vest and also carrying zip cuffs. Kevin Seafried, along with his son Hunter, jointly face charges including entering a restricted building, violent entry, and disorderly conduct. Seafried was pictured with a massive Confederate battle flag inside the Capitol during the riot. According to court documents, the two got into the building through a window that Hunter himself helped to break before verbally confronting Capitol Police officers. John Sullivan, also charged with unlawful entry, violent entry, and disorderly conduct, is all the same one of the more unusual suspects arrested for allegedly participating in the storming of the US Capitol. Sullivan has identified himself as a supporter of Black Lives Matter, and as an activist founded a group called Insurgents USA, which advocates for racial justice. So what was he doing with a bunch of Trump supporters? Well, he claimed in interviews that he was only there to document the rampage. And yet court documents claim that he can be heard saying in a video he himself filmed, let's burn this shit down. Robert Keith Packer was arrested on charges of trespassing, violent entry, and disorderly conduct. Images of Packer at the riot were some of the most strikingly sinister, not for his actions, but for his fashion choices. Yeah, the hoodie also said staff on the back. Now, if you were thinking of getting one of these cute atrocity tops for yourself, I've got two pieces of bad news for you. Number one, online retailers like Etsy and T-Chip have removed these and similar items from their online stores. Number two, if you want to wear something like this, I assure you there's something wrong with your brain. And finally, we have Doug Jensen, who was arrested on five different federal charges including obstructing a law enforcement officer during a civil disorder. Jensen appeared in one of the most widely shared videos of the riots, showing a single officer failing to hold off a group of rioters on a stairwell. Jensen is known on Twitter for expressing support for QAnon and President Trump, and it was through his Twitter account that he identified himself as the man in the video. Smart. This is, of course, by no means an exhaustive list. At the time of this recording, there have been more than 100 arrests in connection with the Capitol Hill riot, and more than 200 case files have been opened. Many of the suspects appear to have charges related to unlawful entry and curfew violation. There are also a number of cases involving weapons charges, assault, and other crimes. Hundreds of more arrests are likely to occur in the coming weeks. In fact, former FBI Director James Comey has suggested that if you participated in the riots, it's probably in your best interest to turn yourself in. This is what the FBI does best, which is to find the people responsible and bring them to justice quickly. If you were there and you participated in the attack, there's going to be a knock on your door. You should turn yourself in now. He continued, if you went up those stairs, not even into the building, you committed a crime. If you participated in assaults on police officers, if you went inside the building, any of that, you were going to be found. The Bureau is a human organization with lots of flaws. One thing it does extremely well is relentlessly track people down like this. The actual rioters are, of course, not the only people who could suffer legal consequences as a result of the storming of the Capitol. Those who helped to plan the attacks or inspire them may also face investigations. This may include Donald Trump Jr. or Rudy Giuliani. As we have already seen, Donald Trump himself is very clearly a prime example and perhaps the best answer to this question. Who's in big, big trouble? Them is so much going on and it's where we call our home. They've been looting and protesting, trying to get it far home. Ain't nobody got us like we got us. Streets is in a frenzy, you see the riots. Stand up for a cause or you die for one of yours. Ain't no universal law.